Hi there, this is Derivatives9, and uh, in this video I'm just going to be talking about uh, higher forms of derivatives. And the whole point of this is just to kind of expose you to the fact that you can do a derivative once, then do it again, and do it again. You can almost just iterate the process of uh, doing the derivatives. And here I'll just give you one quick example. You start off with y equals x to the fifth power. Well, we do know that if we do the derivative once, it becomes 5x to the fourth power. And then if we do it again, which the notation would look like this with two apostrophes, that would equal 20x cubed. Again, for a third time around, 60x squared. And you'll notice that you can keep going as much as you want. Until either no longer matters to you or um, you're, you're told to, top, uh, to stop. Eventually it will equal zero because everything's going to lay out. And that's just in this situation. Things like uh, trig functions, sine, uh, sine will go to cosine, will go to negative sine, will go to negative cosine, which will go back to sine again. So it's almost cyclical. So, um, and some people are saying, well, well, what does this mean? And um, I could just give you kind of an analogy. This would be, say, um, say we were talking about driving a car, right? Here's my little car. Uh, it'll be a truck, armored truck, whatever. Okay, I'm not an artist, okay? But the idea is that the truck can go a certain distance x, right? And that's how we're, we're basing this whole thing off. And the truck can, it, it'll be going a certain speed, which is velocity, or it can actually speed up or slow down, which... I'll just call it acceleration, and realize that with this y equals x to the fifth power, all we're saying is that um, that this is the displacement uh, function. So if it goes one feet, then the car will go uh, up one foot or something like that. It, it just all dependent on what x and y are. So I'm just going to call this like a displacement. That's like a displacement function. And then once we take the derivative of that, this will become your speed or, um, and actually a more correct term would be velocity. And then, as you can see, and that's d dx of displacement, And the next thing would be, uh, that would be acceleration, right? Now, mind you, this is not only speeding up, but this is also slowing down. Negative acceleration would be slowing down, correct? So, d dx of velocity, I'm just going to put v, is equal to acceleration. And, you know, there's, uh, the next one would be called impulse or or some people like to call it jerk in the, in the mechanical design world. But all that is, is that's a change in ddx, a change in acceleration. So, I just wanted to give you kind of a, an overview of the fact that there is a meaning to doing a derivative once, and then again, and then again, and then again, and this and this stuff is used in, uh, I would say, physics a lot, and um, maybe like some more applied sciences like engineering, uh, dynamics, and dynamics, which is obviously physics based, but um, you could say stress analysis. I mean, to be honest, um, anywhere that calculus is used you'll find that you're going to be uh, differentiating to find maximums and minimums. So it's just a, a good concept to keep in mind. Um, if you need to find uh, the peak speed 
or the peak velocity, then you know that it, that basically acceleration is going to equal zero. So that's either going to be the 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 top of the peak or the bottom. So you can you can find that just by um, noticing little trends, and we'll, and I'll actually explain that later on in uh, in another video. But I just wanted to show you that doing this means something. It, it physically means something in science. And I suggest you just follow up with a few examples. See you in the next video.